This video is going to cover the topic of naming angles and angle vocabulary. Be sure the date and topic are at the top of your page. The essential question for this video is how do we name angles and what other terms do we need to know to describe angles? Angles are things we see and talk about all often, but we don't always take the time to really understand what it is that we're seeing. So specifically, angles um, measure the space between two intersecting lines, and this is measured in degrees. So I've drawn two lines. Um, I'll call this point A here. This is where our two lines intersect. So point A is the intersection of the two. I'm going to go ahead and also label this one B and this line down here C, just so I can have some reference when I'm talking about um, these lines. So where these two lines meet, that little point A here, is actually called our vertex. So I'm just going to go ahead and label that. And that's just the term for where two lines meet. But if I want to refer to the angle itself, right, that's this portion here, right? It's the space in between these two intersecting lines. I'm not going to necessarily call this A, right? But I actually have two things I could call this. One way I could name this is to call it angle B, A, C. And notice I'm using that little angle symbol. But I can also call it angle C, A, B. And essentially what I'm doing is tracing the lines. Right, let me use another yellow here color. And I'm saying, well, this angle is made by starting at B, going to A, and then moving on to C. So that's why I might call it BAC. Alternatively, of course, I could name it C, start at C, go to A, and then move back up to B, and I could call it angle CAB. But what you should notice in both of these is that the vertex, A, is smack dab in the middle of the name because the vertex should be in between the two line segments. Here's another angle, right? This is line R, we'll call that, and we'll call this line T. And they meet right here, right? And we'll call this, let's call that the letter S, right? At the vertex S. If I want to refer to this angle, right, where these lines are intersecting, I could choose to call that either angle RST or perhaps angle TSR, making sure there that my vertex is in the center of my name. Right? So I'm naming it by saying where I'm starting, what line I'm starting with, and where I'm ending it, but I'm putting the vertex in the center. And it may not seem like a very big deal figuring out how to name it because it's just, hey, that's the spot in the middle where they meet. But you can see here that sometimes our lines um, connect and they overlap in different ways. So here we have the line from F all the way to G and the line D all the way to E. And H is the vertex in the center. But there are four different angles being formed. So am I talking about this angle? Am I talking about this angle? Am I talking about this angle? Or am I talking about even this angle, right? I have to be able to be specific. So let's say I want to talk about this one right here. Right? Think about how I could name that. Well, I would look and I'd say, well, this one starts over here at E. It hits H in the center, and then it goes out to G. So I would name this green one here E, H, G. I could also name it G, H, E, of course. Now when I look at these, I also notice that some angles are larger than the others. And you may already know that there are different ways to classify or name angles. One type of angle is a straight angle. A straight angle is basically just this straight line, and from one side to the other, it's 180 degrees. So a straight angle is, measures 180 degrees. If you dropped a line straight down um, in a perpendicular fashion, right, like we see here, you'll have um, an angle that is exactly half of your straight angle. This is a 90 degree angle right here, and I mark it with that little um, 
basically that little square here, but it's a 90 degree angle and we call this a right angle. An acute angle is where two line segments meet and it is less than 90 degrees. Whereas an obtuse angle, you can see these two lines meet in something that is larger than 90 degrees. We have a few more vocabulary terms to record, and I know there are a lot, and don't worry, we will be practicing all of these together, but just go ahead and make sure everything is recorded for now. So we have something called adjacent angles. Um, and I've just drawn with red and blue two separate angles, right? So we have angle A, oh, excuse me, angle D, A, B. And then we also have angle B, A, C. These are adjacent angles because they are next to each other. There's also something called vertical angles. And again, I'm using the colors red and blue to show which ones I'm looking at. And these angles are across from each other. So angle X, Y, F, right, that red spot, and angle Z, Y, G are vertical angles. And as we will see later in class, vertical angles are equivalent. That means they are the same size. So angle X, Y, F measures the same amount as Z, Y, G. Which brings us to our last bit of vocabulary for this video, and that's the vocabulary we use when we look at angles as a pair. Two angles are considered complementary when they add up to a total of 90 degrees. So in this case, our complementary angles that we're looking at would be angles ABC and angles CBD. When you combine them together, they make this 90 degree angle that I've indicated here. Two angles can also be considered supplementary when they add up to a total of 180 degrees, when they combine to make the measurement of one straight line. And we will work with these and get to know these terms, um, but when I need to remember which of these two is which, I kind of actually use a little number trick. So for complementary, I kind of think about turning that C into a 9, and this becomes 90, right? Complementary becomes 90. And for supplementary, I think about turning this S into an 8, so it becomes 180, right? But again, we'll work with these and know them really well without the trick, but that's just something you can keep in mind. And there's a lot more to angles that we're going to work with in the coming days. However, we're going to use these notes as a resource and as a reference. So remember that the essential question for the video was um, what, how do we name angles and what terms do we need to know to describe angles? So now we kind of have a list of um, terms and we know a little bit about how to name these angles.